my name is National Master Robert Plunkett, and today I'm going to show you a novelty in the uh, Dragon variation of the Open Sicilian. I have shown a novelty already kind of with the white pieces uh, in the Knight Takes D4 line of the Castle's Queenside variation of the Dragon Sicilian. So now I'm going to cover the more popular move. I'm going to cover the move D5. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So E5, E4, C5, Knight F3, D6. D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6, Bishop D3, Bishop G7, F3, Knight C6, Queen D2, Castles, King side, Castles, Queen side, and we've achieved our main theoretical position. At this point, Black plays the most popular move, D5. Now, here, the main line is E takes D5, Knight takes D5, Knight takes C6, B, C6, Bishop D4, E5, Bishop C5, Bishop e6 to hold the knight. It's well known that bishop takes f8, queen takes f8 because of the multiple threats of bishop h6 and rook b8 followed by queen b4 and the fact that black has a very strong center. It should lead to advantage black. So people do not play bishop takes f8 here. They play the move knight to e4. And at this point, black usually safeguards his rook with rook e8. And then play continues from here and this position is considered to fight it's white. And if you like this position and you understand it, uh, by all means play this. This has been the main line for many years. Um, however, what I'm going to show you is another way that you can play this position. And hopefully this will give you an advantage in knowledge when you are playing against an opponent who maybe has only prepared the main line or has only prepared a couple of the more popular moves here. Uh, Queen E1 is also a popular try, and that can turn into something very similar. You can also take you can also take the extra pawn, and that's very complicated, and it's very difficult to hold on to that extra pawn. But what I'm going to show you is an alternative to these main lines um, that is on its own very complicated, and familiarity with it could give you an advantage against an unsuspecting opponent. And that move is knight c6, b c6, and now the move bishop h6. This leads to some very complex play. And the positions um, that come from it are very unclear. So this is fertile ground to get an advantage against somebody who maybe is unprepared against this particular line. So at this point, there are a couple of options that are available to black. One option is he can play the move bishop e6. And another option is that he can play the move bishop takes h6. And it's not at all clear which one of these moves is better. Right now, theory holds that the move bishop h6 is theoretically best, and I disagree with that. I think maybe the move bishop e6 might be at least equal to it, or possibly even theoretically better than bishop to h6. So the first move that we're going to cover is bishop e6, which may very well be the best move here. I am really not 100% sure. So here, after e5, and the idea here is we play e5 after knight d7, white's main idea is to play h4, h5 and just continue with an attack against the black king. So if you wanted to, white could actually just play h4 right here. And black has to be very careful, because after h5, hg, bishop g7, queen h6, queen h7, blue checkmate, and that'll be that. If white plays h4 right here, however, black's best chance is to simply sacrifice the exchange and play the move bishop takes e5. And after a move like, say, bishop takes f8, queen takes f8, as we've seen in other variations of the dragon, this is by no means a bad position for black. Black has a pawn for the exchange. He's maintained his jerk square bishop. He still has a strong presence in the center. I would actually prefer black here, but white is up in exchange. So if you want to play like this or play just like this, and you think that this is somehow correct for white, by all means, go ahead and do it. I do not recommend this. I think this is actually a very dangerous line for white to play. So my recommendation would be to take on g7 first, and then after king takes, at that point you can play h4. Now this does have a down, I mean, I think this is really the only way to play. But there is a downside here, and that's that oftentimes after king g7, black will try to transfer this rook over to h8 after playing h5, and attempt to defend his king side that way. I think if black just plays knight takes e5, I think white's got a nice comfortable initiative after h5. And it's very difficult to stop all of the attacking ideas white has. One attacking idea white has is to play rook e1 here. And also queen d4. Also hg and queen h6 is a threat. 
and this limits a lot of Black's options. If Black plays rook h8 to meet the threat of hd hg, where he's got his rook on the open file, White can switch gears and play a move like rook e1 or queen d4 and put pressure on Black from a slightly different angle. And this is very difficult to deal with. So I think this is the most trying continuation, h5, g4 to continue the assault. And again, if hg, I think h5 continuing that assault is probably very strong for white. So I think the move rook h8 is the most testing. And the idea is if we take, he's going to take back with the rook. And now there's a couple different tries here, but none of them really seem totally sufficient for white. If white takes and he takes back with the rook and we play bishop e2, uh, knight here, f4, that actually transposes to the line that I'm going to recommend here. The possibility that I don't like is, you know, basically just other continuations are possible. But mainly, my main recommendation here is actually just bishop e2. And I think this move is really solid. One of the things is, he doesn't really have a whole lot of options. If he takes, if he plays hg, I can play fg. This bishop is holding this pawn. And now if knight takes g5, just simply h5. And we're going to continue our assault. And we haven't really paid much of a price for it. That pawn on e5 was not a huge price for what we're going to get. So after bishop e2, it seems like knight e5 is really the only move. And now I will play, and this is important, I don't play here right away. What I do is I set up one more pin. This is why I like bishop e2 over gh, because I have this small extra finesse that I can throw in. And that move is queen d4. And I'm pinning the knight to the king, and the knight's hanging. So the only move that makes sense is f6, and now gh5. And now rook h5 and now f4. And this is slightly different than the other line because my queen has gained to this nice post with tempo and it still forces the knight to the g4 square. So knight goes to g4 and we pile on that knight because now we've got a lot of pins going on. That rook wasn't useful, that one was. We've got this pin going on, we've got this pin going on, we've got this pin going on right here. So we've got a lot of pins and they're going to have to defend this knight because it's being attacked. So now the move, either queen c8 or queen d7, and in either case, the next intended move from white will be to activate his last piece and play knight a4. Now, white is down only one pawn in this position, and I think white has tons of compensation for that pawn. Actually, I much prefer white's position. I'm threatening knight c5. If the queen's on d7, that's going to be a fort, getting rid of the last defender of the knight. The knight's pinned, the pawn's pinned, the knight's also lined up with the king, Every single white piece is active and is participating in the attack in its own way in this position. And I believe that this is ideal. I believe that this is the best way for white to play for a win. Meanwhile, black's pieces are kind of all over the map, and black's king is very loose. This is plenty of compensation for a pawn, and I think white should be very pleased with a position like this. So, in short, that's the reason why I think, okay, bishop e6, it may, in the end, be... The best move for black, it may even be one of black's better tries. But right now, I think that these positions are probably slight edge white. So let's go back and let's take a look at the alternative. And the alternative is right now currently considered the main line. And that alternative is black plays the immediate bishop captures h6. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, here we are. So, black plays the immediate bishop h6. White replies with queen h6. And then black plays his queen to b6. And this is actually turns out to be a very clever idea. Black's idea is basically he's going to let white conduct his plan, which is a very dangerous plan. He starts with the move e5, knight e7, and then plays the move h4. Note that knight e8 just kind of allows white to continue with h5, hg, kind of unimpeded, and there's not any real hope of defending this position. So knight d7 makes a lot of sense, and you'll see why in a minute. It's actually got a very sophisticated plan behind it to meet the threat of h4, h5. So h4, and now knight takes e5. This is a critical part of black's plan and black's idea. 
h5, and now bishop f5 to hold this pawn. So if hg, we intend to defend our whole kingside with bishop g6, protecting that entire open file. So of course, white's intention is to kick that bishop away. We're going to kick that bishop away, and if that bishop moves away, certainly we're winning the game after h takes g6, and we would be. But this was all part of black's very clever plan from the outset when he played bishop takes h6. He intends to play here f6, which is an incredibly clever idea to trap the queen on h6 after, say, g takes f5. We would then play g5, trapping the queen with the move knight f7, coming on the next move, and the white queen is trapped. So because of this, white has to play some other move. Now the moves that white has played in the past are queen f4 and queen, f and queen d2. The move that I recommend, and the move that I still believe is playable for white in this position, is queen d2. And I believe that after queen d2, I believe that white can still hold an advantage. So even if somebody plays this line against you, I still believe that white has an advantage in this position, but I do believe that queen f4 is a mistake here. After queen f4, black can threaten. Queen takes b2 with the move rook b8. b3 is relatively forced. And now black plays just an incredibly clever idea, and... I actually had to play against this over the board at one point, and it's very jarring to meet this move, so I hope you're never in this position. And that move is g5, where he basically forces white to take this bishop, and there is, in fact, nothing better. White has to play queen captures bishop. And again, this idea is extremely clever. It's after queen takes bishop, black plays the move queen to e3, check. Hitting the king, hitting the knight. So that forces king to b2. After king b2, black plays the amazingly calm and amazingly sedate move rook f7. And the idea here is now we're threatening again to trap this queen with the very clever move e6 because the queen is lined up with this knight. So now after queen takes e6, we would play knight to c4 check and we would pick up the queen. And because of this threat, and because of the amazing lack of squares for this queen to go to, and because of the unfortunate position of this king, and because the king can't really move anywhere because it would be dropping the knight, white's forced to give back at least some material. And he has multiple ways to do this, none of which are totally satisfactory for a complete equality. Um, one is he can play knight e4, and I did play this and I managed to get a draw, although the draw that I achieved was totally undeserving, I probably should have lost. Objectively best is probably a move like bishop a6, or even a move like rook d3 right away. Just giving back that exchange. Bishop a6 is ostensibly the exact same idea. After the move e6, white just simply intends rook d3. The point being, if the queen moves, we can take this. So we're effectively just giving back an exchange, and we're going to try to play this position. I do believe that the two pieces for the rook is not going to be good enough in a position like this because these central pawns are going to be very annoying and very strong. And I do believe that black has some sort of advantage here, even though that advantage is probably very, very slight. So let's go back and look at the other move, which I believe to be the best move. And that move is queen back to d2 instead of queen to f4, which I think queen f4 is 11. Okay, so queen f4, we don't like. We don't like queen f4. So the move that I recommend instead is queen to d2. And again, I think black throws in this rook b8. In this case, he's threatening knight, so b3 is forced. And we still don't want to move this bishop and allow hg, so we need to come up with something aggressive. In this case, theory holds knight f3. Queen back to f4, threatening two pieces. At this point, it's black that has to sacrifice the material in order to get something out of the position, and he has to sacrifice his bishop. So he's getting something out of it. He's loosening up the white king. King takes on c2. Queen f2 check. King b1. And now e5, building up that nice big center. But in this position, we do have a little bit of compensation, unlike the other position where we had two pieces for a rook. In this position, we're actually at the whole piece. So white continues with an assault because 
He actually didn't have a better square to put his queen. He could have tried retreating with queen c1, but this is kind of a dangerous looking attack. We need to have some sort of counterattack. Okay, this position, I'm just going to be honest, this position is very unclear. Um, but if you are prepared in this position and you know a couple of the ideas from here, I think not only can you come out of this position with at least an equal position, I think that really white has some kind of advantage here. I don't feel like white is by any means worse. I feel like white is sli very slightly better. So first off, let's cover like why can't they trap the white queen? This was the first thing I saw when I looked at this position. And it certainly looks very scary. And it looks like, okay, my gosh, my, my queen cannot get out. I, I, this is a bad thing. However, knight e4 is a very strong move in this position. It looks crazy because we're putting our knight right on a square where a pawn can take it. But it's a very forcing move. We are attacking the queen. And we're also attacking this pawn on f6. So we're threatening to break through right away. And if they take this piece, if they simply play pawn takes, now we can bring in a piece with check, and we can bring in another piece to threaten mate. So for example, bishop c4 check, king h8, rook here, and point here. Sorry. We're threatening mate. We're threatening mate on h7, and we're threatening mate on g7. And I think this position, I think the game would be over. We actually have all the threats for the most part covered in this position, and we're going to be just fine. He can throw in a couple of checks, but we have pretty much all that under wraps. We have the queen check under wraps to the rook. We have no more checks with the knight other than this knight check. There's no more rook checks available. So for the most part, we have everything under wraps here. We have this back rank covered with our other rook, and basically it's just our threats that break through, and we're going to win. So that's number one, is you have to know about that little trick. You have to know about knight e4, rook d2, bishop c4 check. So that's an important idea. If you don't know that, I mean, this position is, you know, you are dead here. So the main line move is knight to d4. So the first thing you have to realize is knight d4, this is setting up all kinds of shots, all kinds of threats. Setting up tactics on c2, setting up tactics on b3. So one move that you have to understand does not work in this position is the move that threatens to kill him, h takes g6, which would be checkmate, we'd be winning, if it wasn't for the fact that we get mated first. So there's two ways that black can win from here. The one that's easiest to see is this one, queen c2 check, king a1, queen c3 check, king here, and then simply uh, queen back to c2 check, king here, and then queen to d1 is, I think, by far and away the easiest win to see. But if you just want to checkmate as quickly as possible, there is a very quick mate in three here that starts with the move rook takes b3, pawn takes b3, queen c2 check, and now since we have all the squares covered, knight takes b3 as checkmate. So because we get checkmated first, or they just take all our stuff, either way, and then they, of course, could defend, or they could continue to checkmate us after they take all their stuff. So they have two very lovely options there, but we get mated first, so that's all you really need to know. We can't play h takes g6, but that is, of course, the main threat in the position is h takes g6. So I think the only move that makes a ton of logical sense here is bishop d3 developing and covering, especially covering the c2 square. Another move that I think is worth a try, although I'm not going to go too deep into the ideas right now, and I think it's worth a shot to maybe sacrifice the exchange with rook takes d4. And I think if other tries fail in this position, I think that's something that you can fall back on. I think you can try this. I think you can sack the exchange and try to play chess from there. But I think the move bishop d3, I think, is still um, best. Uh, this move has been played before. And the last time this move was played, black responded with the move knight takes b3. Now, in that particular game, I feel like white kind of dropped the ball. Because what White did was he just kind of gave up the ghost and um, forced a perpetual. And you have that bailout option right here. So if you're familiar with your theory and you play bishop d3 and they play knight takes b3, you get to this point. If you want it, you can just get a draw here. You can play h takes g6, and that threatens mate in 20 different ways. So they have to play a, some sort of tactical reply here. So knight back to d4 is pretty much forced. And then in the one game where this was attempted, 
The move that got played was the immediate knight to b5 because they wanted to keep a grip on c2. Rook takes b5 as check. We can't get checkmated, so we had to take. And then this ended pretty simply. Queen c2, king a1, and white has enough material, so black had nothing better here than to just repeat moves. Queen c3, queen c2, with a perpetual check. So if that's what you want, you can certainly get it. But I do believe that there's more in the position, and I don't believe that this position is something that you just need to completely give up on. I think that after bishop d3, knight takes b3, I do believe this move is possible. I think you can play bishop b5. And that kind of crosses up black's plans. And from this position, it's not so clear exactly how black defends or exactly even just how black survives the next couple moves. I think in the best case scenario, even if black does survive the next couple moves, you end up playing an endgame, which is not at all unfavorable for white. And I think after this move, I think white holds some kind of slight advantage. And again, you can check this on your engine at home. And I think this is very playable and very worth playing for white. And I think that if you play these positions, and if you familiarize yourself with these positions as deeply as possible, I believe that you can play these positions and continue to play these positions for some kind of advantage. So, anyways, that's my recommendation against the d5 variation of the dragon. It's a lesser playable line, and if you play it, it should give you the opportunity to have maybe a little bit of extra preparation or a little bit more knowledge in a very specific line that maybe your opponent doesn't have. And I hope you have as much success with this line as I've had with it in the past. And thank you very much. Okay, I wanted to clarify this position a little bit right here. Um, I believe I previously gave uh, bishop d3, and then after knight takes b3, I pointed out that white could force a draw with h captures g6, which of course white still can. And I gave the alternative bishop b5, which I still believe is actually best. The downside of this is I do now believe that, that black can probably force a draw from this position as well, although it does take a little bit more um, accuracy. I, I think the move g5, as crazy as that move looks, actually does force a draw in this position as well. The point being that I don't believe white has anything better than simply taking the knight, and then black simply takes here with the rook. And then white has nothing better than taking here. And then black takes here. And unfortunately from this position, I don't see a whole lot for white here. It doesn't appear that anything prevents black from simply forcing a perpetual by playing his queen to either f3 or e3, and then getting a series of checks against the white king. I think still if it's a human opponent, I think that this is still a very good try. Um, the machines do give this as, as completely equal, so eventually, eventually in all lines, uh, black will find some kind of perpetual. Like even if white tries something like this going after this pawn, or tries something like rook d5 with doubling, it doesn't seem to be enough to get rid of the perpetual. So I would like to show the true alternative here, which is not bishop d3, but that other recommended move um, that I threw out earlier. I think this should definitely be the front runner. And that move is just simply rook captures uh, d4. And then after c captures d4, I think white can just continue the assault with h captures g6 immediately. And now, of course, this threatens mate a dozen different ways. And I like doing it this way, because this way is actually really tricky, is after queen to e1 check, which is definitely forced, White responds with knight to d1. Now, of course, you could do a different move order. You don't have to take hg right away. You could have retreated the knight first. But I like this continuation as I feel it's much more forcing. Um, and it leads to a much more difficult position for black to play. For instance, if he plays queen captures d1, white does get out of the checks and should win the game. And that will be the end of it. So queen takes d1, king b2, and then there actually are no more checks right there. And that'll be the end of the game because white's breaking through here with checkmate. So black is forced to play check. We're forced to move our king with, say, king b2. And then queen takes g6. And now white simply retreats, keeping the material on the board with queen to h3, threatening bishop d3 and continuing the assault on h7. 
And in this situation, I don't feel that black has a strong enough center to justify the weakness of his king. And white's king, in spite of everything, is actually relatively safe. And the most important thing is there's no perpetual check in this position. And this will not end in a draw just because somebody happened to analyze this position correctly at home. So I hope this helps, and I hope this is a good addition to the end of this video. Thank you.